something right here. Nature is definitely telling us there's something here. I mean, what that is, we don't know, but uh, the vultures don't lie. Today we're at the Sandy River, just outside of Troutdale, Oregon. We're looking for Jose, who's, uh, you know, the family speaks very little English with this one from Guatemala. What ended up happening here is, is that the family was down here, not, I don't, I don't know how much of the family, but, you know, family, girlfriend, Jose, was down here on Monday. Went swimming up here in this area, kind of where that peak is at. Not, not where the white, the girl in the white shirt is, mm -hmm. but the next peak up. Yeah. And it was the end of the day. He went, he spotted something that he wanted to go in after as they were getting ready to leave. And girlfriend turned around and he was no longer there. Here's what we continue to, you know, really focus on is rivers are different than pools. Lakes are different than pools. You know, if you cannot touch, we want to continue to push it. Be I, I'm getting really frustrated with it. I really am because of how many drownings happened just here in the state of Oregon in the last seven days. There were seven drownings and two of them, Jose being one of them, have not yet been found. So if, if I'm a little angry and I'm a little passionate about wearing a life jacket, it, it just it doesn't have to be yeah, we shouldn't know. we shouldn't have to be out here um but we were on facetime with one of his family members one of his co-workers was, was down here took us up to the location so we're gonna get in the water right now we're feeling really hopeful on this one more so than yesterday when we started talking about this yeah and maybe you know explain that one yeah. a little bit Doug. um I, I guess before we got here you know we were in a lake setting completely different um environment the conditions are completely different and being there you know forecasting what we were going to experience here on this one uh, definitely envisioning you know more of a deeper river um, a lot more complications being involved because of it being a river like it changes all of the aspects of searching pretty much you know yeah because yeah, yeah, in a lake yeah. I mean they go down they stay yeah. and we're I mean not, now that we're here it's conditions are I would say a lot more favorable than we were envisioning and the reason why they're more favorable is because if you look over here you can actually see the ripples you know and the ripples that are happening there is because it actually gets really shallow there so much so that you could actually just walk across there which means you know if somebody's going to float over there it's going to get hung up somebody's going to notice but you do have a little pocket here I'm my guess right now is it's going to be about three feet so we're going to motor up into the deeper area and then you have eddies you know and what's nice about this river is that is because it is shallow right now it's not running doesn't have a heavy current you have all these little pockets through here with an eddy and what an eddy is is the river comes down and then it starts circling back up and when it circles back up that's the eddy and so we have Jose could be trapped in that first in that pool. area yeah if yeah. he's not and you what's normal with these is if he's not and he made it through this one now we have this next little eddy area down here where it's nice and gentle and another deep pool and so with that how many do we need to go it's not going to be that many based on these conditions yeah yesterday i said we only had you know a 20 percent chance without seeing it now that we've seen it i'm going to say that our chances of finding jose today are up around 80 to 90 percent Awesome. Getting in the water. Thanks for being here. Let's go see if we can find Jose. And like we were saying earlier, we're very hopeful that this should not take long. Conditions are a lot better than what we thought they were going to be coming into this. The river is pretty shallow. Uh, nice little pocket up here that should have the area contained with an eddy. Up here, three feet down imaging, side imaging, 2.1, and, and the difference variance in that is just how far down that one is, as opposed to that transducer. We're casting 75 feet left, 75 feet right, and you know, really for today's search, 
I'm probably going to change this up and let's just go 50 on this. Now we're coming up to a little deeper hole. Now this spot right here, Doug. Yeah. So that log right there is where we were at. Right there? Yep. And that's where the uh, FaceTime uh, conversation this morning took us to. And that's where the family and the girlfriend was hanging out with them. Yeah, we'll check that Eddie back there. You see, it's only four feet deep right here. It's not deep at all. You should start drastically coming up too. As you guys can see, all of those ripples right there, it's very shallow. Go search that one and we're gonna do it upstream because we're kind of coming downstream cross current we want to make sure we get a good read on it and it popped up on my live scope too you know nice and big and how deep was that right there it's about five six feet uh yeah so we want to get a good down image of it and a good live scope of it do you have in coming up river i have control over my speed i want my speed to be you know 1.9 to two and a half miles per hour. And you have the ability to control that coming up river versus down rivers. Very hard to control. Correct. I, I, yeah, I'm controlling the steer of it as well rather than being pushed by it. That's the way you taught me speed is absolutely critical with reading sonar. 100%. You go, you go too slow, you're not gonna see what, you, what you're looking at. You go too fast, you're not, you're gonna, a, a car is gonna look like a pebble, a body's gonna look like a pebble. Yeah. You're not gonna get that accurate size. All right, so here's what we have, and that appears to be a tree. So see how they, uh, see, take a peek over here. So that's, yep. a, that's a tree, 100%. Yep. Yep. Right there, maybe it was off to my right. So we're gonna go put ourselves right over the top of it. So see our line that we just took? Yep. So we're gonna go pretty much, there's that line. We're gonna go straight towards that rock now. That's where we're gonna go. You're gonna get it on your down? Yeah, I want it on the live and I want it on the down. Shallow rock uh 2.2 right here, but it was, that hole was, I think it was at six something. So we should come up on it right here. sideways because then you can catch the water so I'd rather just back it out again. I don't think we need maybe maybe they were just a little bit further up than they thought and well but you don't have to be because right here, this is a strong back eddy right here. Like that thing was pushing us up yeah. river right there. And so if he goes across right there, and if he makes it before that big rock right there, this whole thing back eddies all the way up. Maybe it's just the river. <laughs> Maybe 
it's because it's the end of the little eddy where everything's washing back to and stirring up or I don't know. We need a good prodder. This is gonna give us better ability to uh, um, explore the bottom. Sure. In, in between rocks and boulders where we've been looking at you just quite, you know, can't quite see. This will be able to feel a lot more accurately on the bottom and know exactly what it is. Be able to rule out a rock or... Two and a half, three feet. Look, like I had a beautiful image the other way, but nothing that way. Like right there, like we just passed it. Like that's tall, like a rock, stuck. Four, five to six feet tall. Look at, look at this right here. Oh. So, see where I'm talking about, like you get yeah. your foot stuck? Yep. So now I want a good read on down. That, that's not a normal mound. Right. It's five, five and a half feet tall. I'll tell you as soon as it pops up, and then we'll landmark it too. As well as how many feet out we are. Here. Right here. So I'm not getting the reed going up. Yeah, I think I'm too far, too far out. Too far to the left. Go back more to your right. Yeah, go back to, yeah, to the right towards shore over there. I think we're too far to the left. Just a little bit. Too far. So now there's the rocks. Okay, but here right, it is again. Here, right here. Right yep, here. here it is again. Right there. That's not normal right there. And again, it's wedged into the rock there. How deep? Uh, top of it's five feet. So, I mean, you'll be able to tell just by dragging your pole, so... Yeah, just drop your pole in. Do you see it? No, not yet. Let me just let's get this over it. I can put it on this side because I'll park this right over it with the uh, live scope. So, some from 12 to 8 is 4, and another foot... Or 5 and a half, 6. Alright, so let's try coming in and angle to it. Cross it. Cross river. I'll just park it right over it. I'll just hold this in position then. I mean, I'll try to get our live scope on it. Really smooth. That's the that's the thing. There's no limbs at all. I can see all the down imaging again. something over here yeah they got washed up right over here in the corner because it's hitting the corner and then going that yeah you know, like from the edge of this rock straight towards the RV yeah like if he did it make it out more than halfway he's not over here right like but it's just so shallow so I wish here. we had an eyewitness 
Yeah. Like, yeah, he was on the other side, yeah. or no, he never made it more than right. Just because of how directly it's pointing at the bank, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, we've sewn our this, you know, both sides of all the rocks and everything. For now, I'm gonna say that we've ruled this one out. I can't say with 100% accuracy that we ruled this one out, but I say let's uh, keep moving. So while we were out uh, searching just now, you had the chance to walk down the bank yeah, over here? Yeah, I walked almost all the way to the bridge. Um, the shore here looks pretty shallow, but over there in the corner by those trees, there was yeah. like this little gully where there was full of flip flops and like pieces of wood. Okay. Looks like the river kind of spits it out into that corner right there. A bunch of flip flops just trapped? Yeah, just stuff that floats kind of gets pushed into that little corner. Okay, all right, cool. Um, well, we're, actually, we're actually gonna head down there right now. We're gonna cut out um, all of that area. We've covered all of this area upriver as best as we can for now. So that's where I mean, we're gonna move in that direction. You said it's right over there near that bank where the trees are coming kind up? Kind of where the sand is over there, yeah. Six feet. Wow. Here. We're hitting bottom again. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing there. Jared, you're always eating. True. How deep is it here? Nine feet. Oh wow, you could jump off that bridge. This side anyway. Let's yeah. That side. Yeah. I mean as a recreational. I mean not that we would want to advocate for that. Obviously you have your life jacket on when you jump off the bridge. It's just so much calm here. Like, so we're getting really shallow again. We're at like a one and a half to two feet here. This entire thing. Ankle deep, you can walk that entire thing right there. And so, so, see that log that's out there? Yeah. That log is high centered, and that's only like six inches tall. So, I'm gonna have a hard time justifying going beyond this point. Because we've got floaters and kayakers and every single day on here. And it's just not, I mean, again, I don't know. I'm always confident in everything I do and say. Concentrate on this then. Run it up, run it down. Where we, where we started our search on the bank, opposite on the opposite side, that's where something's gonna get caught in those first two, three little eddy areas right there. You know. And, and what we've learned also, like what we think that we know at the end of the day, honestly, we just don't know. That's why we're out here doing it. Yeah, you got three buzzards, and this is, you know, this. The wind is coming this way, yeah. so somewhere they're trying to identify what they're smelling up here. 
and it's, it's in the same area where we were just searching and we were picking up the same uh, scent yeah. so it's the, n nature is definitely telling us there's something here I mean what that is we don't know but uh, the vultures don't lie here, here's the thing also is we're four days into this and the river's not that deep you know so you want to pay attention for things that are floating that's something new that's floating right now I don't know what that is but anyway you want to keep an eye out as well if, if, if he was at the bottom you know caught up somewhere and he begins to float they could break free we've actually been out uh, looking with a boat before and the prop wash has actually dislodged and then they floated from there after so we spotted them on sonar they were down prop wash whoosh, just enough to kick them up just enough what was that in the water over there uh, dead bird but, uh, maybe I should a, a what yeah. dead bird Oh, you think that's what the birds are looking at? Or? Yeah, it, it could possibly be that dead bird, but it, that bird's been dead for a very long time, so I, I doubt that's what the vultures are flying around for. Do you think he would still be here? Uh, yeah, if you go over there, you look, look at that back, Eddie. Oh, yeah. It then heads up and it gets really strong up over there. You can see like the bubbles heading up. And they get stuck on the back side of the drop. Yeah, he's not down there. There are some vultures up there. Yeah, there are earlier. vultures going crazy over there. Well, and, and there's a quite a stench over here too right where the rapids are coming down just to the uh, other side of the river that um, is very similar to what you would expect we scanned it but because of the rocks that are so tall you know I've got like an object right here off of this rock that I really want to double check because it was five and a half six feet tall but it was flat and round like it didn't have you know any limbs on it but I do want to now put my eyes on it that's one area of interest and then our other area of interest now is going to be that wall there's a little uh, cove over there but uh, my big area of interest is if he ended up in this back eddy over here where that stench is coming from we want to double check that over there so over there where jared is down right now we we had a six foot object um at, at first we didn't think was a rock but after uh, going over it at different angles, we were able to determine that it, it, it's most likely a rock. But now he's getting in between those rocks over there where something could possibly be wedged. You see the bubble. There's a little underwater cave system down here, too. There's so many underwater caves here. It's freaky. Definitely sounds promising. He said there's really deep caves right there. Underwater, that those are stones. But I mean, probably a lot of possibilities of them getting hung up in these areas over here. Uh, I mean, we searched for hours sonar wise, but when there's caves and stuff like that, it, we can't detect what's, what's there in that scenario, which is why he's underwater now. Uh, he, he, he wants to know. Uh, where he was at in perspective to where we thinking that they were jumping from. I would say right so there. So what he's doing right now is he's got his hands on that wall with his fins out covering a good eight feet all the way across that wall. Yeah. So now the current is taking us down now that we're out of the eddy. He's at like three inches of visibility right now. Yeah. We don't have any confirmation that that Jose was jumping or any of that information. We're just ruling this out, this area, because we've heard that people do jump here off the rock into the water. So now again, it's pushing us up. So if somebody's in here floating, it could get pushed up here. And over here is where we have this smell. Once we get over here, where we're going now, drifting into. There's a lot of just little dead zones right here. And they get deep right here too. Those are the things that in running sonar, you can tell that there's rocks, but you're not going to be able to tell the unknown. Like he's in the water now. He's going to be able to detect caves and the things that you're not going to be able to read on the equipment. You know, the, the equipment is great, but unless you're underwater, I mean, you're not going to know there's a cave there. What's this floating right here? Oh, it's just a leaf. Well, at this point, I th I th what we're mainly doing right now is basing it that he's floated into this little eddy, you know? There's a lot of little dead zones right there. He said there's little, like, 
deep pockets all over. Found more caves. Strong current, you know? Water rushing fast through here. And, I mean, you can see how the river, how high it normally is. All the trees stop there. So according to the, what, what the brother just told us, um, he didn't make it that far out into the river for him to make it across into those back eddies, which was what we were thinking. Uh, now with the new information kind of changes a, a little bit of what we were going off of earlier. So knowing the fact that he didn't make it out too far into the current, meaning it did take him and kept him towards this side uh, and possibly down into where we were searching earlier, where we're gonna have to go back over all of that. Yeah, right where you're at is where they're saying they lost sight of him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right where you're at. Yeah, so he's, he's just gonna, he's just gonna drop down right there with the current and turtle at the bottom and just let the current take him and, and maybe we'll do that a few times. Because that, that, that brought him up and then put him back down there. I mean, this definitely confirms that there's no way, like now with that information from the family, based on him going in 10, 15, 20 feet out, yeah. there's no way he would have made it to the other side there. He would have not made it into those back eddies. And I have not moved this entire time. I made it through those rapids there. And so my question is, is like, I thought that I would get hung up in that eddy over here by the bridge. Dead center the entire time. So at this point, Doug, we still have a couple hours of daylight. I'm no longer confident that he's in this area at all. Like we've cleared this with sonar. We've cleared that one with sonar as well as diving. And now that we have confirmation from the family that he didn't make it out more than 10 feet. It completely changes the whole strategy. 100%. It's going to be a tough one, but if he's floating, nobody's down here, nobody's paying attention. Can he make it over there? Yeah. I mean, he can because, you know, as I mentioned a few moments ago, you know, last year when somebody drowned, they actually made it all the way to the Columbia River, which is like six miles from here. So I'm going to say that we're just going to run this. We'll pull the sonar up when it gets shallow, when we know that we can just see. And then we'll drop the sonar back in every time we hit, uh, you know, where we can, drop the motor back in. We're just going to run this thing for uh, a couple miles. So as we go through these shallow parts, we're going to want to keep an eye out as to anything that's even just barely. You know, I mean, you, you noticed the bird earlier today. Take this route over here to the left. Break through. Keep an eye on the as we go down. Like the regular floaters going down are not over here. Yeah. Not looking. So we really want to pay attention, especially into the shadows. In, one in the indication that we're actually hitting bottom here, but there's another indication as to how shallow it is. 12 inch wide log and more than half is out of the water. Still nothing though. Something right here. Right there. Alright, so it's still off to the on the shore side. So I think it's just a rock, but we'll go back over it again. A lot of rock. I mean, that, that's the problem with this area. It's just all the rocks that are right here. Could be that stick right there. Not what I'm looking for. I'm not sure if you can see it, but right on that little rock island, there's a shoe on there. And then we're coming up to this, this and my... White water rapid. Yeah, we can get through here. It's gonna get really deep. That honestly, what we just went through was pretty powerful. Yeah. You're, you're, you're gonna get pushed. No life jacket up there between those rocks back there. No life jacket? I've seen orange, two now. Orange. Yeah. And this is definitely in an area where something would have got forced over into. Especially coming through that. Yeah. And the current that just pushing right into this wall right here too. Yeah, and then it gets nothing but a sandy bottom here. So searching is really good right here. Right here, we've got something down here. 
All right, let's go back on that. Now it's off to the right, right here. It's not wide enough, I think it's just a rock. But let's swing back over it one more time. Right here? Yeah. Not tall enough, not wide enough, not long enough. I think it's just a big rock that came off the top. Yeah, it's just a rock. It's three feet long. So we're about a mile and a half down river now, where we first started, approximately. Yeah. Uh, going off the notion that he definitely has floated down river and nothing so far. And, and the reason why we can say that is again going back to the one from last year that floated from the same location all the way to the Columbia River. This Columbia River is probably two miles, two miles, mile, two mile, mile, yeah. Yeah. Two miles. down that way. And the Columbia is the uh, big river that we pull a lot of cars out that separates Oregon and Washington. Same river we found in Antonio. Same river, yep. Yeah, between that pointy one yeah. and the medium sized one is right where we came. It's halfway full. <laughs> I thought we were going over. <laughs> this eddy that runs along this shore and then back behind that rock is where we typically have bodies end up. For whatever reason, this stretch of current just spits them right out into that eddy and there's a bunch of boulders down there that in this visibility, I mean, we can't see anything. So yeah, I was yeah. there today, now we do. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, we'll search a little more. Thank you, thank you for what you guys do. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, thank you. Came right through there. I almost want to try that again. Yeah, if we just like prepared for it this time. We can yeah. do it. No, I mean, if I if I gun it, we might be able to just power right through there too. Early in the morning when nobody else is here, nobody's gonna laugh or take pictures of us. We also activated rescue too as well. <laughs> they were like in the water coming after us. Adventures with purpose rescued on water. You can see the headline now. How deep is it right here? Yeah, we're actually running uh, like nine feet right here. And this is kind of our last deep spot that we have. Prior to pulling out, we're gonna have to pull out right here. This is this last uh, parking lot area. If we go to the Columbia, like we're not getting out if we end up with any more shallow water. And so here's, so I mean, so this is our dilemma. So we've had a lot of shallow water today that I just feel like it would be very difficult for Jose to make it uh, over all of those. So, you know, we did as much as we could for your family today. We wish that we were able to find him. You know, we just, we weren't able to find him today for you. I wish I had him for you here today, but we did everything we could for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. It's never easy giving the family news, whether it's a, we have found somebody or we've not found somebody. And I was very hopeful today. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I was yeah. shooting like an 80, 90%. Like, mm -hmm. it's not going to be a problem at all. But, yeah. you know, when you have somebody underwater, you know, whether you have murky water or you have clear water, it's just the fact of being underwater and not knowing where they're at. Right. Right. So do us a favor. I mean, if you're going to the river, go on the lake, wear your life jacket. On that note, we really want to say thank you to Doug, to Josh here behind the camera. Josh, thank you for hanging out with us. Yeah. Um, be sure to support them as well. I've got their links to their YouTube channels down below. You know, we're all out here as volunteers, you know, giving up our time to help these families for no charge. And we're able to do so because of your participation in, in all of this. So if you would like to know how to help out more, there's information in the description down below. On that note, hug the ones you love. We'll see you next time. Later. later.